see if this is you. You've done pretty well in life, and you've earned the right to a prestigious executive car. You'd rather like a Mercedes-Benz, but not a dull-looking one like the guy over the road drives. If that three-pointed star could be mounted on the bonnet of something with proper rear seat space that cuts more of a dash, something a little more cutting edge, you'd be interested. And you'd be a Mercedes CLS target market buyer. A cross between saloon and a coupe, this model has long pioneered an appealing niche within the full-sized executive sector as a highly distinctive proposition with comfortable backseat room but styling that suggests otherwise. Though extremely refined and silky smooth on the road, it also has a subtly sportier flavour than the E-Class on which it's based, especially in the faster, more efficient and more sophisticated third generation form we look at here. The CLS may be billed as a coupe, but its driving demeanour is very much geared to long distance luxury. Lengthy highway journeys are aided by superb refinement, optional autonomous driving technology and supple suspension that can be further improved if you pay extra for air, body control, air suspension. Uh, Mercedes has improved its petrol engine technology this time around with the mild hybrid EQ boost system that's fitted to the four and six cylinder units on offer and that improves efficiency and low down pulling power. That's helpful because the CLS is a bit more portly in third generation form. That's primarily due to the standard fitment of formatic four wheel drive, uh, which Mercedes deems necessary to match what rival Audi A7 Sportback and BMW 6 Series Gran Turismo models are already offering in the segment. As a result, you'd be wise, if budget permits, to ignore the entry-level four-cylinder petrol and diesel variants and instead go straight for the inline six-cylinder engines that this third-generation model was launched with. Uh, continuing on with our review of petrol power, let's tell you that your six-cylinder options start with the 367HP CLS 454MATIC, which uses the same three-litre engine found in uprated 435HP form in the top Mercedes-AMG CLS 53MATIC Plus form. Here though, we're trying the 3 litre diesel, and uh, that's available with 282 HP in the CLS 350D formatic, or 340 HP in the CLS 400D formatic variant that we're trying today. This Pokia diesel variant manages 47.9 mpg on the combined cycle, and both diesel derivatives deliver a class competitive 156 grams per kilometre of CO2. All models get a 9-speed automatic transmission and Mercedes Dynamic Select driving mode system. Twisting secondary routes uh, don't really sit in this car's comfort zone. Uh, the steering's not especially feelsome, uh, but the brilliant ride quality and the superb refinement offer ample compensation. CLS styling has always been, in Mercedes' words, emotionally charged. Not everyone's been a fan of this model in its first two generations, but those who have liked it have really loved it. Most agree that the lines of the original 2004 version were more memorably sweeping than those of that model's more clinically fashioned successor, and that was a dynamically dramatic look that chief designer Gordon Wagner says his team have tried to recapture with this third-generation C257 series car. Inside, highlights include cabin configurable lighting, emotive jet turbine style air vents, and the widescreen cockpit design from the E-Class that sees a couple of configurable 12.3 inch screens joined together to replace the previous infotainment monitor and instrument binnacle dials. Uh, now this optional command infotainment central display is really well worth having with its Wi-Fi, 3D navigation, smartphone mirroring features, and app connectivity. Plus, the cabin is beautifully trimmed and these seats are brilliantly supportive. Time to take a seat in the rear. Now this third generation CLS is 59 millimeters longer and 15 millimeters wider than its predecessor and it shares the same wheelbase as the brand's quite spacious more conventional E-Class saloon so it ought not to feel too coupe like in the back. Uh, true the sweeping roof line doesn't mean you have to duck a bit once you open one of these frameless doors and step inside. 
but once you're in place back here, it's actually not too bad in terms of space to spread out. Legrooms aided by the particularly slim front seats with a scalloped knee level cutouts. This a third generation CLS is the first in the model line in which it's actually been possible to take three people on the back seat. And that's a change presumably in response to feedback from previous customers who were annoyed to find they couldn't do things like give their kids friends a lift home from school. Let's move around to the boot, which can be equipped with this rather pointless powered lid with 520 litres on offer. There's just 20 litres less than you'll get in a conventional Mercedes E-Class saloon and just 15 litres less than the cargo area in the rival Audi A7 Sportback. Uh, if you're taking longer items, then you'll be glad of the way that as standard, the rear bench splits 40-20-40 so you can flatten the middle section for things like skis without affecting a couple of rear seated passengers. For self-made business people seeking an appropriate but not extravagant reward for a lifetime's endeavour, uh, the CLS remains an expressive, individual and very complete choice. That's provided you can afford the significant price tag. It's a very German expression of fashionability, but the right kind of buyer will find it very desirable indeed. <laughs>